Hey guys, what's going on? Sha here, and today we, well, I guess a couple hours ago now, almost nine, probably pretty late to this little bandwagon, but uh, we got hit with some pretty, I would say out of left field tank nerfs. I don't, I didn't really expect anything to come at this point because we were, all, most of the tanks were looking pretty good. Tank balance has been pretty steady so far throughout like beta testing into the Dragonflight's uh, launch. Now, you can, obviously, there's an argument to be made that some tanks are a little bit stronger than others, especially when you look at, like, Protection versus Brewmaster, but for the most part, I feel like the tanks have been in a pretty solid spot, at least for the start of the season. But, <laughs> the one day I decide to go to bed early to get some Shut Eye, uh, they slap this uh, nerf. So this is coming with the upcoming reset, but we're going to walk through it. I already have seen a lot on Twitter and what others, some other content creators and players have said, and I kind of want to look at this myself and kind of think through it and just like give my response. It's it's going to probably be pretty negative because their justification is like spoiler, but they want <laughs> what they said is they want healers to focus more on healing tanks, which is bullshit. I don't I don't know how many healers enjoy actively healing tanks. It's a big reason why I think Brewmaster this season was going to be a pretty, like, a fairly weak contender compared to some of the other tanks. I know a lot of healers who love healing with, like, Blood Death Knights because they don't have to heal them. Blood Death Knights are fairly self-sufficient, at least a good Blood DK is. So, uh, let's walk through this. Uh, if not, I'll just keep ranting, so. Okay. With the launch of Dragonfight Season 1, so this is going to happen next week. Uh, Tuesday, or I guess uh, Wednesday for EU. They're going to make some adjustments. There are DPS nerfs and stuff down here as well. I'm not going to go through those in this video. This is just specifically tanks. Uh, so this is what they said. We've been taking a long look at tank survivability as we prepare for the Dragonflight season, uh, season one. I'm going to paraphrase probably a bit. Based off of this already, I'm assuming that they're not just looking at M0. So I don't think Blizzard would look at like Mythic Zero, fresh out of the box expansions, watching people go through this like really low level content and making adjustments off of that. This data is probably coming from a long look at beta testing. So in general, we found that the new talent trees have introduced a lot of powers across all classes and specializations. Talents that were once exclusive through systems like talent rows, legendaries, or covenants can now be equipped at the same time. Through our recent testing, we've determined that the damage done to tanks needs to be increased. While we were thrilled that players are enjoying playing tanks in Dragonflight, and want the role to be healthy, there are some negative effects that can come from tanks being too strong that we want to avoid. We want healers to play a key role in keeping tanks alive, and tanks shouldn't be able to easily solo large portions of encounters after the rest of the group have died. We're adjusting the damage reduction passives on all of the tanks, effectively increasing the damage tanks take by 10%. We think that tanks will still feel powerful after this change, and it will result in a more balanced gameplay experience for all players. Okay, so like I said already, we, one, I didn't expect the nerfs, two, these are probably coming in from most of the beta testing and a lot of the mythic, both probably in-house and obviously on beta server raid testing that they've done, along with mythic plus, and probably PvP, but I don't really care to look into PvP that much. They also made the point that talent rows, legendaries, and covenants can now all be equipped at the same time. That is true, like I'm just thinking about like Protection Paladin, for example. Back in the day, we used to use have to choose between final stand or righteous protector which righteous protector if you're not familiar is basically cooldown reduction on your wings based off of how much holy power you spend so instead of having a two minute cooldown it would be like a minute and a half i think back in shadowlands it was like close to a minute so you would be able to get wings for every divine toll and then it would compete with final stand which is a bubble aoe taunt so you have an immunity as a tank that can aoe taunt everything within 15 yards you can now take both of those talents which is stupid strong by the way so thinking about things like that i definitely understand where they're coming from protection warriors are kind of in a, sim a similar boat they have like an insane amount of things in their kit from things like demoralizing shout into like you have thunder lords which is the cooldown reduction you obviously have things like shield wall and massive shield down uh shield wall reductions through like spending rage anger management plus the uh, impenetrable wall i think is what it's called you also have things like battle scar veteran as well indomitable still exists you also have fueled by violence and brutal obedience and all that stuff so you definitely are way tankier in Dragonflight now than you were back then and honestly this is a little side tangent but it's felt so good 
actually leveling through a Dragonflight. I have all six tanks at max level now. Most of them have done all their tours. Most of them are like 370-ish in that realm. Some are higher, some are lower. But what's cool about these talent trees, at least through the leveling process, is that as you level up, instead of feeling like you're getting weaker because your secondary stats are going down, you yeah, that was combated with new talents, really powerful talent choices. So I wish they weren't targeting it like this because it is fun for tanks to just fucking live forever. And I think a good tank player should be able to. And they did make a note of that. They did say, we think that tanks will still feel powerful after this change and it will result in a more balanced gameplay experience. I'm sure a ton of people maybe <laughs> ignored this little last part. Okay, so we'll get into what they did. Uh, it's pretty much across the board 10%, but... I don't think tanks are doomed. I just think they're, they make a weird argument somewhere here. We want healers to play a key role in keeping the tanks alive. This is never going to be the case. If you're a healer player and you're watching this for some reason, <laughs> welcome. But also, do you enjoy healing tanks? Can you let me know in the comments below? Or do you prefer a tank that is fairly self-sufficient? Now, it's weird because like you have things like Brewmaster who rely on heals but typically have a very smooth intake. So it's kind of, it's not active, really. It's like that passive keeping them alive, right? Like apply some hots, maybe a spot heal here and there, throw a DR on them, or, you know, if you're a Holy Priest, throw Guardian, uh, Guardian Wings or a Guardian Angel, whatever it's called, and let them kind of do their thing. But for the most part, a lot of tanks, I feel like are fairly self-sufficient. So I don't know a lot of healers that I play with who enjoy healing the tank. When like the tank's dying, they're like, oh shit, what do I do here? Um... So I don't, I don't like this. I don't like this argument. This argument seems really weird. I know like there's times probably where like a paladin or a DK can literally just like stay alive forever after the group dies. But I think that's like not, a, it's like a weird experience. And I don't think it's, it seems like it's so targeted. This part of the dialect here is so targeted at like pug scenarios. I don't, I can't imagine a time in a mythic plus scenario where I'm the last one alive as a tank player. And I'm just sitting there just like, ah, I'm going to just solo this to flex my huge fucking EP, and, right? I'm going to just call a wipe, and we're going to wipe, and we're going to reset the pole. Or we're going to hurt that at the key. And, like, in raid, like, uh, in the very few times where, like, some anyone who watched the world first race for Liquid back in Sebulchre when, I'm forgetting his name. What was the blood decay's name? Scott. When he, like, soloed Anduin at, like, 2% health. Like, that's fucking dope. And, like, obviously he's a world-class player. But I don't think... I don't know, man. <laughs> Tanks, you just you just fucking die. Like you just take your hands off of your keyboard, you die, and you reset. Um, this was a weird argument. I don't think tanks are going to be. This might be a hot take, but I don't think tanks are going to feel like shit. It's just going to be. Uh, you're going to have to put a little bit more thought into your survivability. All right. Anyways, I'm going to rant too. We're already at nine minutes. Fuck. Okay. So what they did is most tanks, if you're not familiar, have a have a passive that comes with just being in the tank spec that will. Pretty much give you just a flat dr so for blood you have this blood fortification this gives stamina 30 percent stamina as well as a 10 percent dr they're removing the dr portion of it and this is going to be the true for most of these which it's not equal this is definitely not equal in by any means they also have ranks uh demon hunters have ranks of their wards which give them additional uh reduction on uh, both to physical and magical damage so this is going to be cut in half uh, guardian, same thing. This is actually a talent instead of being just a guardian, but you're pretty much forced to take it. I was looking at the talent tree a little bit before I started doing this video. This, like, you're pretty much taking this anyways, uh, but they're just removing the damage reduction portion of it. This is a really massive hit because Brewmasters always are already kind of at the bottom of the totem pole, and they just got a health, a, a pretty decent health buff. I think it was 15%. I might be wrong about that, but it was 15%. And now they're just like fucking making them take 10% more increased damage, which is like defeats the point of them actually getting the buff in the first place i think this happened last week so it's just like that doesn't make sense um they just buffed ages of light didn't they the other day so now it doesn't um it's not gonna reduce damage anymore and the same with vanguard this one's kind of weird because like they're reducing two different aspects of our damage reduction so defensive stance was kind of interesting because at least in until you're in like really high keys Defensive stance should be used as a defensive and not as like an aura, right? Most warriors that I know of, and myself included, don't, we don't sit in defensive stance the whole key. If you have a, you know, if you're in your avatar cycle and you have a lot of rage to spend, you just sit in battle stance. If you have shield while active, you sit in battle stance. Uh, unless you need like some crazy amount of DRs, that's when you swap to battle or, or defensive. Or 
when you like don't have anything. Let's just say you don't have Avatar, you don't have Final Stand or Last Stand, you don't have you don't have Demoralizing Shout, you don't have Wall. You go into defensive stance. You're taking out a large hit of damage. Like if you don't have anything, you swap to D stance. Or if your healer is like whatever, right? Like there's certain situations that players will adapt to, but for the most part, generally, if you have some type of cooldown up, you don't send defensive stance. So it's like this doesn't nerf Prot as much as it nerfs Brewmaster, which is what I'm a little nervous for. So again, like their argument is just like we want tanks to still feel powerful, but more balanced gameplay experience for all players. I don't think it's I don't think healers want this. I really don't. Uh, I might be wrong though, and I don't feel like it's equal across the board. I think they should have taken a little bit closer look at the numbers because in this sense, like it looks targeted, but it's not. All tanks have relatively the same passive, and what they did is they're just like, we're going to just cut it. We're going to cut it down, or we're either going to remove it, or we're going to cut it in half. So it's basically a 10% damage reduction across the board, and we'll see how this plays out. I think Brewmaster players are going to be a little bit more upset than Protection Warrior players. Uh, the rest of these classes, I just don't think it's going to be that crazy for. Demon Hunters actually might suffer at the top end, but I, I'm not sure. We'll see. This, this is interesting. Uh, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this little rant. That was just kind of my thoughts. I know I'm a little late to the party. I <laughs> went to bed last night at like 8.30 p.m. Like, I just, I was like, I'm going to lay down for a little nap. And then I woke up like three hours later. And I'm just like, nope, I'm going to just go back to bed. So I went to bed. I woke up at like 4.30 this morning. Recording this at 6 a.m. And uh, yeah, living large, you know, living like Larry. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know what you guys think in, think in the comments below. And yes, please, healers, let me know if you enjoy healing tanks or not. Anyways, I'll catch you guys all in the next one. Peace.